The Intel Ghost Canyon NUC was really sweet because it was like a five liter chassis with an i9, a 2070. It was, we've never really seen something that compact and that powerful. But here today we have something that's, well, it's bigger and it's also more expensive, but it's also way more powerful. You're able to get up to a 2080 Ti and I'm excited. This is the Simply NUC Vortex. It's a, it's kind of like a Ghost Canyon NUC, but it's also not, I don't know. We'll see, let's get into it. People should do like unboxing shipping crates that are just absolutely loaded with tape. Oh, they've already beat the $10,000 main gear computer by including a power cord. So that's great. Cool. Vortex product overview. Housed in an ultra compact, all steel cooler master chassis. The Vortex by Simply Knock, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so what do we have for, oh, this thing's, this thing's pretty loaded. So we have an i9 processor, so that would be the 9980HK. That's eight cores, up to five gigahertz, I believe. Kind of depends on the chassis it's in. An NVIDIA GeForce 2080 Ti, 64 gigabytes of RAM, a one terabyte NVMe SSD. I guess they preloaded Overwatch. Sure, I'm bad at Overwatch, so we might not play that, but we'll see. And a 650 watt power supply. So the Ghost Canyon NUC only had 500 watts, which it's more than enough for pretty much everything. But if you have a 2080 Ti, the 650 watt you're gonna want. Warning, we strive for quality in everything we do. We have added a foam insert to safely ship your graphics card. Please remove the foam insert before turning on. Thank you, Simply NUC team. All right, that's fair enough. I've said this many times before, everyone here has. Horrible, terrible things can happen to your PC while it's in shipping. And anything that prevents it from arriving in pieces, I quite like. Except for when it arrives in a bunch of pieces you get to build. That's, that's kind of fun. Oh, weird. They have red USB ports on the front here. I guess that's the sort of thing that's like, gamers want red USB ports, maybe? I find it kind of weird. It looks like one of those like back in the olden days, you'd have like USB 2 sort of like weird stuff. And also just the Simply Nuck sticker. I think on a system that costs as much as this one does, they could have gone for something a bit more premium. Then again, up here, this thing looks pretty cool. I am quite glad that they included that warning about the foam because I would have just turned this on without looking on the inside if I was a consumer, I'm pretty sure. It does look like they have quite a bit of a different layout than in the Ghost Canyon NUC. So in the Ghost Canyon, the power supply was kind of down in the basement and it was like a thin, uh, almost server style power supply. This one's up top. I'm guessing it's also a weird form factor, but we'll see soon. Why is this not coming off? There it is. The RTX 2080 Ti. And that foam's really in there. Oh, geez. More manhandling. Oh, losing points immediately. Cooler master, why would you do this to us? On the Ghost Canyon duck, they had this super cool thing where you're able to slide off the top piece and it just had these little contacts that allowed for the fans to get power without any leads. Whereas right here, they've got leads. Not that it actually matters, like it's just it's two fan connectors, pretty easy. But at the same time, Intel did it better. So they do have a normal power supply in here. I was a bit confused at first because it looked like up top was the power supply, but it's just a like extension that runs through the case to a normal Cooler Master power supply that's up front here. I'm guessing it's a SFX. Yeah, just an SFX power supply like normal. Anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves a tiny bit here. So this is the Simply Knock Vortex and it's a 7.9 liter chassis that's based on the Ghost Canyon Knock. So you've got the their compute unit chummy up in here. I, I'm finding it slightly harder to justify it in a 7.9 liter size chassis because that's the same basic size as like the Lock Ghost. I think that's like right around there, 8.1, I believe. Dan Case is even smaller than that. And in those you get to build like your own whole computer, assuming that of course there's supply and you can get one. I'm also just in general, not very happy with the cable management. Like the power cord is just looping around and kind of goes wherever. Like they know how big this is going to be. They don't need the extra bit there. And like, what is, 
this. It's not bad, but it's pretty far from good. <laughs> One thing I also just really don't understand is if you look at the back here, there's a PCIe kind of, it looks like that you have an expansion port there. But if you look on the inside, you can't add anything. <laughs> I guess it doesn't really matter because it is giving the compute unit here a bit more air. But at the same time on the Intel one, it's drawing air directly from the outside. Whereas here it's drawing air from in beside the GP. How do you even get air to there? Okay, how, how do these fans work? Okay, so the fans on the top are blowing out and there's nothing that's really feeding air to the compute unit. So that's this part right here, like it would be blowing air out. And so it's good that these are exhausting. And I guess like the bottom is pretty open, so it's going to draw air up through, but I just find it weird that they decided to do it this way instead of flipping it around like they have on the Intel version and just drawing air directly from the outside. It's probably fine. Nah, I guess we'll see. One good thing about this layout is it's easier to take the GPU out, I guess. Wow. This has to be the most generic ass 2080 Ti I've ever seen. <laughs> it's a plastic shroud. It's got one big old blower fan, which is probably fine, but I don't know, the like Founders Edition has two. Like the performance is going to be the same, but you paid like $1,200 for this thing. And ugh, that's not what you get if you pay $1,200 for something that didn't come in this package. So if you go for the bare bones kit, which I think starts at $1,700 if you already have like your own GPU, this right here is basically what you get. So this does appear to be just the normal compute unit that you get in the Ghost Canyon NUC. So if you wanna see what's inside here, look at either the LTT video or Linus's short circuit on it. And the rest all looks pretty bog standard. So yeah, I guess at this point, let's put it together. Freaking magic, yeah, nailed it. Wow, please don't screw that up, editor. Okay, well, we're all set up and ready to go, but there is one thing that's missing, and that's a sponsor segue to Displate. With Displate, you get metal prints and you can choose from over 800,000 unique designs. They have a magnetic mounting system that decreases the risk of damaging your walls. We even got some of our own designs on the platform now. You can actually have me like holding a laptop there. Use the code circuit to save 15% at the link below. Where's the power button? A little higher. A little higher? Higher. Oh, is this it? Yeah. Cool. Ooh, that looks really fun with this table. <laughs> Wait a second. So it says on the spec sheet here that we have 64 gigabytes of RAM, but we actually have 32. It is showing up as two 16 gigabyte sodiums, so at least like one of them isn't dead. But at the same time, I was hoping for 64. Our games are installed. Let's jump into good old Doom Eternal. And well, it's, it's gonna do good. Even if this thing is like, horribly handicapped. It's got a 2080 Ti in it. Like it's it's not gonna be slow. <laughs> it's so friggin' loud. Like the the fan controls just not good. Alright, so we're looking at like 200 FPS. Unsurprisingly, it's working great. Who would have ever thought that a $3,700 gaming computer was good at being a gaming computer? <laughs> um, what are our temps looking like after that little bit? Oh, she's hot. It's not throttling though. So this is about the same as what I was getting on the Ghost Canyon NUC. 90 watts continuous. She's toasty, but it's not cooking. For the GPU though, 83 degrees. I'm not super happy with that. I imagine if they went with the reference design with the two fans right here drawing in air, you'd be able to have much better temps than that. It's also really loud. <laughs> so I... I'm sorry, Simply Nuck. I, I just don't know what the conclusion is here. You're paying $3,700 for a system that if you were to build it yourself, you could make for about $2,700. It's like a $1,000 premium for a cooler master case. Just not great. Like the details, like these rivets, the cable management, the fans being really loud. I wish I had better news than that. Well, anyway, I'm, I'm sorry, Simply Nuck. Yeah, that's about it. But you guys should get subscribed because we do have another project that has to do with Simply Knock on LTT that is going to absolutely blow your minds. I can't actually tell you what it is, but I just got a bill back for reverse engineering for that project and it's very expensive. So yeah, get subscribed, hit like. That's about it. Have a great day. See you later.